appreciate you taking some time. Yeah. To talk about this, uh, this little thing known as uh, the Sandlot. Yeah. Um, I've been told that you're the one who, uh, over the years, has taken most of the, I don't know if the word is grief, uh, but you get shouted at uh, a, a lot by uh, passing cars and uh, people in malls, and you're out and about, uh, and y you get lines thrown at you all the time. Mm hmm Yeah, you know, it definitely has happened a time or two. How does that feel? I mean, how has that been? Is it, has it gone from being annoying to endearing, still annoying? I mean, what? I mean, not most of, us, <laughs> most of us don't get, you know, to play a character that has any sort of uh, impact on anyone, let alone something that lasts for, you know, this is 30 years now. Yeah, I think you said it. it you know, it's never, um, it's never been annoying. It's, it's pretty humbling. And, you know, as an actor, you do this job to have that sort of la lasting effect on, on someone through your, um, through your art, and uh, there's no better way to show that you did that than having your killing me small scream to you from <laughs> a couple of cars. So I, you know, it, it's really cool. It's um, it's definitely something I've lived with since we did my movie. I can't grow a beard, so this is about all I can do right there. That little five o'clock shout out. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's amazing, and you get to meet families and sometimes three generations, which is quite something that have all seen the movie. So it's cool. Well, and sometimes you get to meet, I don't know, Mike Trout, that sort of thing too. And then there's that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's always a good day when you can hang with Mike Trout for a few hours. And the, is that, is that surprising to you that, it, you know, that the, the character is so strong that they can stick you in a, in a, an ad with Mike Trout and, and everyone gets it. Uh, it hasn't have to have any reference. We know exactly what's going on. But yeah, no, I mean that it's amazing. It's um, yeah, that those, those are kind of the fun days. I when I get you know get to meet those guys because they're larger than life, and um, the fact that they sort of grew up in the movie is pretty cool because I'm kind of growing up on on their baseball now. You know, it's got to be pretty uh, mind boggling. Is there is there any uh, particular player that you've met that uh, blew you away more than any other? That I that I that that just, that, just, that just it blew you away that it surprised you you know as a fan or I mean they all do you know meeting Big Poppy and Dustin Pedroia because I'm from Boston that was pretty cool I think Shanti and I met them uh, ten years ago now um, and, and then even in LA you know Justin Turner and I met Mookie Betts at a golf course and um, they're just all so great uh, you know um, Aaron Judge in New York and. Juan Carlos Stanton and uh, CC Sabathia and um, all those guys. I mean, it's it's wild. You you watch them play, and, and you don't realize how good these guys are at baseball until you watch them up close. You know, when I did that commercial with Mike Trout, um, he just had there he had to toss the ball to himself and and just hit it out into the outfield, looking like it was a home run. And he did like six in a row, and just it was a full. Uh, you know, major league size field. And he was just tossing it to himself and hitting it out of center field every single time, hitting the scoreboard a few times. I mean, and we're not talking right field, left field. He was hitting them out of center field every single time. He was, it was a home run derby to himself. It was pretty crazy. What do you think it is about this film that kind of uh, sticks with people? I think it's, um, you know, what it's become over the years is th there's something really special about something you grew up on and then showing your kids and then having the same reaction. Um, I showed my son, my six-year-old, I have a six-year-old and a three-year-old, showed my six-year-old the Goonies mm. a, few, a few months ago and he loved it. Uh, and that was very emotional for me because obviously Sandlot I was in, so it has a bit of a different experience for me but the Goonies is sort of that movie like the Sandlot for other people but for me so there was something really special about showing him that movie and having him love it um I just you know uh he's starting to watch Harry Potter and it's the same thing I was a little older when when I got into the Harry Potters but there's just it was still 20 years ago you know so then my son to be like what's that what you know and you're explaining the movie so I think that's part of it and I also just think it's about baseball which is you know, built in uh, America's pastime. And then, you know, it was set in the 60s. So it had this all, you know, 
it was a period piece that's sort of, you know, the, the 60s, you know, there's nothing in the 60s like an iPhone that uh, screams, um, you know, that sort of stuff. So, Yeah, I think, uh, you know, obviously you made this in the 90s, but the, the, having it take place in a, in a different, uh, different, you know, completely, almost completely different world from what the 90s were now, and, and comparatively now, a radically different world. The 60s are so far removed. But there's something about the the innocence of youth that that era captures, I think, better than you know, you know, in an '80s film we can look at Stranger Things or whatnot. It's not the same sort of uh, teenage years, or you know, yeah. there's something radically some, something special about the the '50s and '60s that that films tend to just tap into. Extra nostalgic, it's true. Although the '80s is pretty great, I you know, <laughs> it was funny because who knows if they'll ever make a sequel to the the disney you know tv show that they talked about a little bit. but the one thing that i thought would have been really cool about that show is that the, the age we are now we'd be in the 80s mm. so you know or, or no we'd be in the late 80s early 90s but wow what a great you know time period to shoot something like that because those 80s and 90s are really nostalgic but you're right the 60s i don't know the the cars are older they're not you know yeah the the clothes are um, are timeless. The you know uh, the it's just right before modern technology sort of starts starts rearing its ugly face. Well, and kids still listen to baseball on the radio, and uh, yeah, you know, didn't and kids still play baseball, not on not on the Wii. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 kind of a you know I, I, over the last ten years, you know, you guys have kind of come back together. You spend a lot of time apart, and it's over this last ten years, kind of when the, the resurgence has happened. Um, just from an outsider's perspective, what do you think of baseball right now? I mean, it's gone through some some troubled times, some rough times, and uh, you know, is arguably not the sport that it once was popularity-wise. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, I think anything that um, I don't know, it's tough because. You say, oh, speeding up the game is great, but there's also something great about it being five hours. And, you know, there's no better sport to watch live at a, you know, at a ballpark than, than baseball. But it's also because you're not ha watching it half the time. You're like with your friends, you're eating food, you're grabbing a beer, you're grabbing peanuts, then you go watch. And then, you know, it starts getting exciting. And so I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of... I guess how's their viewership since all the changes? Is it got is it better is it better viewership or yeah. that really is all that matters? If people are are interested in watching it more, great. Yeah, I don't know. I was watching anyway, so you know. Yeah, exactly. That was uh, baseball's been the one thing that I've uh, kept with uh, throughout my life. Uh, you know, I was a, com a completely mediocre player as a you know teen. Uh, but for whatever reason, that's the one that I can go watch and feel like I have some sort of grasp on. Um, yeah. So what is it like coming back to Salt Lake City? Uh, this is not the first time you've been here a few times. And going back to the actual place where you shot this, uh, most of the time these, these places where you shoot get redeveloped or, you know, disappear. Uh, this is one that's, you know, stuck around. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really cool. I mean, they rebuild it and... Um, it's it's pretty special um and it, it, you know it's i don't know it's just very it, it's a surreal experience um but it's it's really it's really cool because you, you can feel it they do such a good job the the dugout looks the same the backstop looks the same the houses haven't changed so the only thing we're really missing is mr myrtle's house in the background and the fence I don't know that they build the fence, but that fence was was what it was all about. So hopefully they built it this year. But it's pretty great. What is it like meeting fans? Uh, obviously, you you've met some celebrities, but what what is it like to you know meet people who you know are everyday you know people who who grew up watching you? It's amazing. You know, it's it it honestly never ceases to amaze me how many people there are that have watched this movie. Uh, I go to different cities, different states, different countries, um, and they, you know, I, I was just in Mexico, and I, uh, I had no idea, but it's huge in Mexico. Like, you know, 
the, the guys are yelling Hambino at me and I did not expect that being there. So it, it's really, it's really something cool. I don't know that it's quite gotten out of North America. I know Mexico and Canada and the States, um, maybe some of the Caribbean islands when I've been there, it's, it's traveled to there, but I guess we'll see if I go to Japan, if, uh, how, how big it is in Japan. Cause there's a good shot there, you know? How do your kids react if you, you've got, you know, do, do they just think it's normal to have, you know, somebody yelling at dad or, or that sort of yeah, thing? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know that my three-year-old has, has realized it yet or what he thinks of it, but I've, I've often wondered what my six-year-old thinks because one will be out and I'll stop and take photos and, you know, so I, I think he sort of gets it and, you know, I tell him I'm dad's an actor and, you know, these TV shows you like some of, I do these too. And so that's why people stop me and they, they really liked the movie. And, you know, so I, I think, you know, they're more interested in finding the next cool and, you know, jumping in it though than anything else. So and to, to them, I'm just dad. So. Well, it's great that you can be both. Yeah, it is. It's great for sure. So you're going to come back. You're going to be at the baseball game Friday night. Uh, for the, the bees game. No, I, I'm I'm only I'm you're, coming in Saturday. Okay, you're flying yeah. in Saturday. Okay. I'm, I'm missing the bees game. But you will be at the VIP signings and all that at the yeah. I'll the be there all day Saturday. Fantastic. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, yeah. You know, what are these all day events like for you guys? You get together, you reminisce. Uh, you get to do a little more often now than you used to. But what's it like getting back with the old guys? Oh, it's great. I mean, we, you know we share this uh, moment in history that uh, is, is pretty great. And we were brothers when we filmed it and we're brothers now, you know? Um, so it, it's really nice to see them and, and spend some time with them. And uh, it's great. Yeah. You just kind of pick up where you left off. Oh yeah. I would say so. I mean, you know, the great thing about all of our characters is the director did a, you know, casting this movie was such a process and it, he really did find, he cast it based on reality a little bit. We all have a little of those characters in us. So I am a bit of the ham, you know, um, Mike Vitar who played Benny, he, he was sort of the, the leader of, of the pack and Brandon who plays the Nunez, him too, like kind of a leader. Doncy is the, you know, the, the, the sweet talker ladies man just like he was with wendy you know and he's he's definitely the coolest of all of us and so everyone kind of has that uh, in them and you know that transfers to real life um and so it just when we get together now it just kind of comes out and we have a great time and it's always really special to see the director too because he was like a big brother to us on set and so it's great to hang with him because uh, he really deserves a lot of the kudos for this movie well, I was talking to Chauncey just earlier, and he said that he does see a lot of himself in the character, so it's interesting that you see that as well. Uh, do yeah. You, do you still connect with that kid, or is that like a, an entirely different person to you now? Gosh, I mean, I think, you know, at least for me in my career and any different roles that I've played, I, there's always a part of you that you put into them. Um, you know, so... Uh, I think, yeah, I still connect with them because there is a little part of me in there. Um, and, and there's, uh, it's an easy one to connect with too, you know, the, the defender of the Sandlot, the, you know, friend to everyone, don't mess with us, the, you know, guy who kicks the, kicks the junk out of the bullies, <laughs> and, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of, it's, that's a fun, that's a fun character to, to, you know see see parts of yourself in